I will be back later on. Oh, no! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, there she goes. Good evening, everybody. The Music Fan is back, bringing smiles to the faces, knowledge to the people, and most importantly, music to the masses. And I brought a friend along this time. Hello. Hello, this is my friend Frankie, and together we are going to be looking at a particular album tonight. What are we looking at? We're looking at Opats. In Cauda Venium, which basically translates to Poison in the Tail. I wasn't going to attempt to say that. That's fine. I don't really know Latin either, but we'll just move right along. I don't really know a lot about Opeth. I've listened to a few of their albums, which is why I needed to bring my ringer in. Someone who has... Since we've known each other, basically told me you gotta listen to more Opeth. Told me that Blackwater Park is a highlight and is one of his favorite albums of all time. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, he's the expert on here. I am just one of his students. <laughs> so tell us a little about Opeth. Yeah, so Opeth, they broke into the metal scene in Sweden back in the early 90s with their debut Heritage, I think in 1994. And came out as one of the, the very characteristic of the albums, I think the next at least seven or eight, where one songs, probably 10 minutes plus, you have the death metal parts, you have folk acoustic parts, queen vocals, back to the almost black metal rasps of their songs. And they kind of continued that up until, I think the last album that they did that was Watershed. After Watershed Heritage, they completely revamped their sound, in my opinion, where they got rid of the death metal vocals and it just became progressive rock as opposed to progressive metal. How do you feel about that progressive rock? Ooh, Fire. crux of it. I don't like it as much. Mm -hmm. Not saying I want just a watershed clone for the next four albums after, but I just think that that's such an integral part of their sound. To just get rid of the death metal vocals, which I think Michael Wagenfeld is a really beast of a singer at that, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of wasted talent. But I understand. They've said in interviews that they're, they're kind of bored of, of death metal, and you know what? I understand bands change. That's just my opinion. That's fair. My experience with them, I've listened to Orchids. I believe I've also listened to their next album as well, but it's kind of grainy. It's been a very long time since I've listened to their earlier stuff. I wasn't a huge fan at the beginning because at that time I wasn't a huge fan of the black metal scene, but I did really enjoy their guitar work. I think that's what stand out in my mm -hmm. mind on a lot of their stuff. Then I got back into them with Sorceress. I understand that that's not the best jumping on point. As someone who enjoys the more classical 70s style of progressive, when you're talking about like Yes or Jeff Rotal, I found a lot of really good stuff that I liked on there. I found this idea of classical, folky, progressive, but also a little bit of sludgy and tense moments to make it sound a little bit more interesting. Sorceress was solid. It wasn't necessarily in my top 50 of 2016, but it was still very memorable. Even though it didn't end well, I think it started very solid. So, of course, on this are you in? I wanted to check out their next album because this is a band that I would love to get into more, especially if this is their style that they're going with. I love progressive rock. I know some <laughs> wish it is. <laughs> I know some people are against it, but I do like this era and I would love to see what else they can do. So the cool thing about this particular album, first off, is not only is there an English version of it, there's also a Swedish version, which I find really interesting. I actually listened to both of them to see if there was any difference in sound or style. There really, really isn't. Still, listen to them anyways. We're going to dive right in. What were your first thoughts? I think that they achieved what they were setting forth. I think it's probably a little bit more heavy than Sorceress, which I'm a fan of. Mm -hmm. I think that they're able to sort of continue off what they've done since Heritage. You have driving organs, guitar, harmonies, and you know clean vocals. They're able to set that, like you were saying, sort of like a Jethro Tull-ish, a lot of 70s era progressive rock mm -hmm. types, Cream Kearns, and they're able to achieve that solidly. Yeah, I do think a lot of this is a little bit heavier. Whether you have a song like Heart and Hand with a little bit more chugging guitar lines or something a little bit slower like Next of Kin, there are a lot of heavier stuff on here. But what's also cool to me is that there are also a little bit more theatrical songs on here. It reminds me a lot of what The Deer Hunter do. That is definitely right off my alley. Songs like Love Long Crimes and even The Garotter also have this feel of theatrical. And there's also a lot of use of not just organ, but a lot of piano 
parts mm-hmm. on here, whether it's the beginning part of The Grotter or Love Horror Crimes, I feel like this is a little bit more diverse in sound than what Sorceress was putting out there, making for a little bit more of an interesting ride. Favorite songs on your end? I'd say probably Dignity and Heart and Hand. I know that's the single, but I think that they both have really good driving presence. They have good mix of the heaviness that I'm looking for in an Opeth album. And just interesting, I, I like that they both cut to the chase. Some of the other tracks down the line had a little bit of a little bit of a wasted space a little bit. I think they just cut to the chase on those two tracks. Yeah, I agree. I, I think those two do, definitely do stand out at the beginning. I just love how literally you get right into it on Dignity, where they have the, the double bass pedal drums. Yeah. Uh, you have just this chorus of everyone singing and very like tense guitar and organ parts. I also really enjoy that first chord progression where they have the guitar solo because getting really nerdy for a second, it switches in between like major, minor, all these cool ideas. And it like basically makes a circle. So if I remember correctly, the chord progression is like F sharp minor, then you go to B minor, then C major, then A, and then you go A minor, A flat, C minor, F sharp. And then it goes back into F sharp minor. Play it now. I'm going to pull out a piano. <laughs> the cool thing is just like it's a never-ending circle idea, which I, I really enjoy. It also has a really cool slow section with just acoustic guitar. It does feel a little bit like any beginning of any like progressive rock album mm-hmm. where you always seem to have that one song at the beginning that's a little bit like slower and sets up everything mm-hmm. but it still is really cool and i like how the ending is like really like whimsical with a lot of really tense melody lines and then heart and hand phenomenal as well just this really chugging guitar line there's also a lot of really cool guitar lines and organ lines playing around with it one of the best melodies on the album it does end a little bit weird because it has this like callback of help by the beatles because he <laughs> goes when i was younger so much younger than today it's really beautiful it's between like me major seven d major seven this like acoustic guitar part which is really cool but when you say like a song that does overstay its welcome a little bit that ending feels a little bit overstayed. Yeah, and there are, and there's some, there are parts on the album that do definitely overstay. In terms of my favorite, easily Love, Lauren, Crime is my favorite song on the album. It's so simple, yet so beautiful. It's a quintessential prog ballad. Some beautiful harmonies, absolutely powerful chorus, and a phenomenal guitar solo at the end. Just like a huge bluesy guitar solo. What also stands out is this like little section of like A flat major where they are able to like play around in. It's a weird comparison, but like if you're a Chick Corea fan at all, this kind of reminds me of Windows where it has this modal section of one chord and they're able to just perform over it. That one stands out to me. There are some songs on the end that do stand out, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Any other like positives for this album that you can think of? I think that adds more energy than Sorceress, definitely. A little more engaging, and I think some more memorable hooks, like mm. the hook for Heart and Hand. That stands out pretty well. I think that after listening to it, even once, that'll be able to get ingrained, which is what you want. You don't want to listen to something, and since they have such a big discography, you don't want it to get lost in other stuff they've done. Even though there are some longer songs that do meander a little bit, I think there's something memorable in each one of the songs that you can just grasp onto. Though, we do have to talk a little bit about some negatives, and I think from the get-go, I think the biggest one is there are some songs that do meander a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I love Universal Truth. I love the message behind it. A quick behind lyrically, from what I've read and understood, a lot of what this album is supposed to be is about looking at death and about life and mortality and all these Swedish parts that are happening apparently are from a a special in Sweden where there was a guy talking to kids about what they think about God and about death and all these things. And it was the perspective of what God is and what mortality is from the eyes of kids, which I think is really interesting. And it doesn't necessarily follow it throughout the whole entire album, but there are songs that do deal with death. And I think Universal Truth is a really good one. It seems to be talking about someone who's like on the ends of their life and watching like the younger generation and especially his kids tarnishing his legacy that he has built over the years 
and he's like trying to come to grips with that. I think that's a cool idea, but I think a song like that, it works well with a lot of its ideas, but it just is a little bit too long in general. Even though there's like so many cool parts, it could have been trimmed down to like maybe two songs. Agree. It's it's not even the length. There are parts where it, it takes until the what, 45 second mark for it, it to do anything. I think that, that style works if there's still movement and momentum. But yeah, there were tracks where there wasn't momentum and mm. it just didn't seem natural. Some of those, the lengths of the songs. Yeah. I think that they, they try to stick to what they've done forever. They say, oh, we're the band that makes 10 minute long songs. So let's continue with that. I agree. There are songs that didn't have that urgency, which is a drawback. One of those that do stand out to that is Next of Kin, which is a little bit sad because I do love a lot of that song. The guitar work in the middle where they drop out and it's just a, an acoustic section is so memorable. It's a little bit predictable, not in a bad way. It was more of like, I know where this is going and this is going to be fucking cool. The last part of it, when it has this diminished chord and eventually resolves to a, a major chord, is really, really cool idea. But other than that, like the rest of the, the song kind of stays a little bit too long, especially when you get to that ending where it like is a droning one. Mm -hmm. It's like boom, boom, and it just keeps hitting. I do like the really diminished ideas on there, but honestly, the chorus is one of the more grating ones on the album. Last big negative for me other than charlatan which to me i don't even remember that song that much like i've listened to it many times and i know it's like the tensest and most dissonant song on the album and very sludgy but like it just goes by so quickly and i don't remember it mm -hmm. actually two big things the intro i don't know if you remember the intro at all but it's it's like just choruses and then it has like this very like active and flowing electronic line that just doesn't seem like it fits in this style this very theatrical style this feels a little bit more like something you would hear on a, a beginning of like a dubstep album <laughs> so it it feels weird but the the me the the biggest misstep is the last song on the album you have an amazing song continuum which hits so well with like a lot of jeff rotal yes ideas the drumming on there feels very yesish. The chorus is the best chorus on the album. You have everyone singing parts and it's so powerful. The whole entire song is such a cool ride to listen to. And then you get to this last part where it's just guitar and a little bit of drums and Michael singing, the river of time flows on, life is, life is ruthless. And again, it goes into the idea of the passing of time and mortality and it's beautiful. And then you get a song like, and all things will pass, which continues that sentiment, but going back to what you say with a song that just takes so long to build, it takes like the like the fifth or sixth minute to actually get to like something really tangible. You could have had an incredible ender of Continuum and just ended it. Mm -hmm. And now you have this song, this last song, that just to me isn't that amazing. Though I will say Garotter is also interesting and really cool this very jazzy lounge singing song with all these really tense moments and really cool offbeat melody approaches though another one that is just a little bit too long but i think it's just worth it overall you have a really diverse sounding album and a lot of really solid moments on there the only problem is that if you just got rid of like maybe five minutes worth of material, I think it would have been a little bit better. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's good. I mean, I will say my plug for any Opeth album, bring back the death metal vocals. That's You do that really well, and I'm used to that, so I'm never going to get over that. I'm biased, but it's solid. Can you ever see yourself like really, really loving one of their progressive rock albums? I don't because I'm biased. Yeah, I don't want to see a clone of, of Watershed done you know, four times after, but at least to have one song. Maybe Michael Ackerfeld just needs to stop Opeth and make the same music, but under his own name or something. That's fair. And have two separate projects. Speaking about separate projects real quick, one other cool thing, the Dignity music video, I believe is made by the same person who made some of the music videos for Soen. If you know the lore of Soen and Opeth, you know that one of the members of Sylvan was originally in Opeth, so mm. there's a connection right there. And it's really cool that both of them put out an album this year. As of right now, for me, as much as I love the Sylvan album, and it's r really close to being like 
top 10. I think this one to me is a little bit better. When it comes to it, there are parts that I can say that I don't enjoy, like little parts of songs, but when I listen to the whole entire album, I love the vibe of how it all transitions. The first time I listened to it, I was like, oh my God, this could even beat Fear Inoculum for me for, for album of the year. And though like I've tempered my expectations a little bit more after that, it's still really solid. We're gonna give them a couple of ratings. So for you, play on repeat. Listen to it once, listen to a few songs, listen to singles, completely avoid it. What would you go? <laughs> I'd say you play it once. Play it once? Okay. I think this is a play on repeat. I think that there is just so much interesting material. You know, maybe it doesn't hit the highs of other OPEP albums. Again, I don't know enough. <laughs> From what I understand on his end, this doesn't hit the highs. But as a progressive rock, progressive metal album... This is really solid with a lot of nice homages to past progressive, as well as some really dissonant and sludgy parts that make for an overall interesting experience. The one thing I will say that is a little bit sad to me, and I think it's just because I always find this interesting in progressive rock albums, there's not a really a clear narrative. I know that shouldn't be bumming me out, but after like reading it up, I really thought there was going to be something there, like a full-on storyline, and it just seems like there's a bunch of songs dealing with death but not much of a clear narrative and to me that does strike it down a little bit they, they always have songs about death too so yeah. they're really not going out <laughs> of the comfort zone at all and that's not a generalization listen to any album they put out <laughs> so also we'll do a quick number review because i know we've done that in the past so for you what would you give this album I'd say seven they have such a big discography I think that, in my opinion, once you get up there with your, your 10th album, 11th, 12th, you really got to have it stand out or else it just gets lost. Maybe if this is their, their second album, I'd rate it higher. They've been around since 1994. It's a seven. I worry asking you this question, but if you were to put this as, you know, in terms of your rankings of like your favorite OPEP albums, I'm assuming it's going to be like mid, mid, mid to lower tier. Yeah, I'd say mid low. And now I have to listen to the whole discography <laughs> because I feel so different about it. I'm going to give this a solid 8.5. It has just so many interesting parts on here and so many songs that I continuously go back to. Even when I'm trying to listen to other albums, I continuously listen to Love, Long, Crime. I continuously listen to Continuum and uh, Heart in Hand. Though, to Frankie's point, also... I don't always finish all those songs. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a little bit of a problem where if I'm listening to Heart and Hand, listening to the first five minutes, and then still seeing that there's two minutes left, don't really want to listen to them, that becomes a little bit of an issue. But there's enough material there to satisfy progressive rock fans, to satisfy people who love Jeff Rotal, yes, all, King Crimson, all these founding fathers of progressive rock. Definitely take a look. It is still one of my favorite albums of this year, and this year is shaping to be a really good year for metal. But that is our time. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, thank you so much for sitting in and uh, giving us your opinions. rant about, <laughs> uh, back in my day, Opeth were real metal. Rah, rah. Other than Blackwater Park, to people who haven't listened to Opeth, what albums can you recommend to them? Watershed. Ghost Reveries, try Morning Rise. I think that's your second. I think that's a, a great album. And this is on my little baby. She agrees as well. Let me know if you like or hate this album and your reasons why. Let me know other albums from 2019 that you'd like me to review, share this with your friends, and most importantly, subscribe to my channel. That way I know you enjoy what I'm doing and want to <laughs> see more of this in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, do it for her, do it for him, do it for me. I will be back later on with another Are You In? But until then, this is The Music Fan, this is Frankie, and we are signing off.